Hello, my name is Cyclone Zoz, and today we're going to be tracking, first of all, the storm over in the Coral Sea that has a good chance of becoming a tropical cyclone in said Coral Sea, and we'll be discussing whether it's going to impact the Australian coastline or not. And then we're going to take a look at Kiralee's remnants and the weather that she's going to be bringing for New South Wales, Victoria, and Queensland. And then we'll take a little general look at the Australian weather. If you are brand new to this channel and you want to receive daily forecast updates, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Now we're going to zoom in to the Coral Sea right now. You can see the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Curly moving south of Mount Isa towards Birdsville now. It's looking really good. It's held up a lot better than I thought, but it's the Coral Sea system that we're looking at right now. It puffed up a pretty good stack of thunderstorm activity. We call it convection in the tropical cyclone world about four hours ago, but it's since really started to die off and wane uh, towards the northwest of New Caledonia. It's actually about 200 kilometers to the northwest of New Caledonia at this time. And it looks like it's got a nice developing low level center here. You can see these low-level clouds. Actually, I'll uh, pan this a little bit across to give a, center, a sense of direction with New Caledonia here. You can see these wispy low-level clouds sort of rotating in that clockwise fashion around a general point, which would be located around here. That's indicative of a low-level center starting to develop, which is what we want to see with a developing tropical cyclone, which means that this storm is probably classifiable as a tropical low at this point. And the Bureau of Meteorology agrees, calling this tropical low 06U. Now, this is now outside of the Australian region of uh, area of responsibility, which means it's now Fiji that's going to be tracking the system. So if you want to get the absolute latest information, then you're going to have to check up on the uh, Met service over in Fiji on this storm. But the Bureau of Meteorology will still be providing updates on this system, considering it is still a risk to the Australian area of responsibility. But if it does get named, it will get the name of Nat instead instead of Lincoln, which is the next name on the Australian naming list. Um Nat, however, is the next name for the South Pacific uh, region, which is uh, covering areas such as New Caledonia, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, and over towards Fiji as well. Now, we're going to take a look at this system's forecast now. Uh, we're going to be discussing where it's going to be impacting. Uh, if we take a look at the wind forecast right now for the tropical low, you can see it's been initialized as a pretty broad low pressure system with some fairly strong winds on the southern side of around 50 kilometers an hour. They'll be gusting up to around 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah, 70 kilometers an hour, as you can see. So some fairly strong gust starting uh, on the southern side of New Caledonia at this time and it'll be a pretty gusty day for some locations on the New Caledonia coastline but it looks like Queensland is definitely uh, missing out on any wind speeds from this tropical uh, low. Now, the forecast has changed a lot from yesterday. We're not expecting this to really impact Queensland in a significant fashion. You can see over the next few days as I really play this through, I'll play it through a little bit slower. You can see it intensifies, or it really tries to intensify, but it looks like it's just too broad. It's too large of a low pressure system to get its act together, and it takes a full work week uh, up until Friday the 9th of uh, February where we see this become a tropical cyclone, but it is such a a brief tropical cyclone and it's barely a tropical cyclone actually as it moves through Vanuatu um, just south of Port Villa, actually. Uh, still, though, pretty um, gnarly pressure of 993 millibars. You looked at a Category 1 strength system here, and with wind gusts approaching, I would say, 75 to 80 kilometers an hour, it's definitely a system that could cause some isolated pockets of damaging to locally destructive winds, and it could cause some tree damage or power line damage in some southern parts of Vanuatu. So it's not something to completely sweep under the rug, but for Vanuatu, which is built for some pretty strong tropical cyclones, it's a very good thing to keep in mind that you might have a weak tropical cyclone moving Moving towards you by the end of next week until the into the start of next week. I meant to say the end of next weekend into the start of next week. Actually, um, you can see. It kind of stalls come next Monday and Tuesday over the top of Vanuatu. Uh, we probably shouldn't be taking a too detailed look at the forecast beyond sort of the five-day picture. We've, we kind of only have an accurate picture for the next five days. But you can see it does stall actually over the top of Vanuatu before swinging back. And that's a plausible scenario considering we've got a pretty strong high-pressure system down towards uh, New Zealand here, which will be driving these tropical cyclones uh, back towards the Australian region, um, especially in the subtropics of the system is to get itself in a position like this by around uh, early next week, we could be seeing it driven back towards Australia, but that's looking really long range. And once again, when you're going beyond five days for a tropical low, the forecast is very unpredictable and a big challenge to make. But still, over the next five days, we've got a pretty good idea of what we've 
expecting here i've been saying it for a couple of days it's going to move away from new caledonia and vanuatu slowly into the center of the coral sea and slowly start to intensify it'll be a broad system will be a messy system it could also be quite a wet system with a lot of thunderstorm activity around the center of it but it's going to be really disorganized thunderstorm activity so it's not going to be anything that's going to be driving some ridiculous rainfall accumulations over a lot of locations in fact for the next five days new caledonia in one or two locations is barely only going to receive 200 millimeters of rainfall and for a tropical part uh, part of the world like New Caledonia, that's really not much. It's nothing to write home about, put it that way. And Vanuatu expecting even less rainfall from this tropical cyclone as it develops in the Coral Sea. But it really, it really isn't an impressive system over the next five days. Beyond the five-day period, it's got ample fuel to become a very powerful tropical cyclone. But I think just because it's going to be too broad and too large of a system to uh, intensify properly up towards Category 3 or Category 4 status, I don't think it's going to do it. So we're going to see a very weak tropical cyclone at best out of this and certainly not a significant Queensland cyclone threat. It's nothing worth worrying about at this point. Uh, so if you are watching from Queensland and you're concerned about a tropical cyclone impact after Cyclone Jasper and Cyclone Kiralee, there's absolutely no point in worrying about it right now uh, because it is a very long out uh, on the forecast period, and B, it's looking very weak at this time. Now, we will switch it up to the GFS model. It has a relatively similar picture to what the ECM relief has. In fact, I'll take it back to Monday. When we see it slowly develop in the center of the Coral Sea. It wraps itself up a little bit better than what the ECM relief has. I think that's because the GFS has it initialized as a smaller system, um, and as it heads towards Vanuatu, it actually becomes a fully-fledged tropical cyclone of probably Category 1 proportions by around next Thursday and Friday before moving through um, and once again, stalling south of Vanuatu and bouncing back over New Caledonia into the Coral Sea, but weakening off very substantially there and its remnant fuel probably being used up by a tropical low that's going to develop over the top of Fiji. So it's a very similar forecast to what the Eastern Blue F and the GFS have. And uh, regular viewers have heard me bang on time and time again about model congruency. We're really starting to see some model congruency now between the two big ones, the Eastern Blue F and the GFS forecast model. And that means that I'm a lot more confident in saying what's going to happen over the next five days. Beyond five days, I'm a little bit more uncertain, but in the next five days, a very weak tropical cyclone set to develop in the Coral Sea. That's kind of the takeaway point from, uh, I guess, this forecast right now. Now, we'll switch it over to the Access G3 forecast. This is the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model. Let's see what they have in store. Again, strengthening it in a very similar vein uh, to what the GFS and the ECWF have. It's within a couple of millibars of each other, actually, and it's very close in location as well uh, in terms of where it intensifies. The Access has a tendency to intensify tropical cyclones uh, a lot faster and a lot stronger to what the other forecast models do, and that's what we see here. You can see it becoming a pretty powerful tropical cyclone of nearly Category 2 proportions actually as it moves through uh, Vanuatu and then down towards New Caledonia. And this would have peak wind gusts probably approaching 120 kilometers an hour. So it's definitely a relatively strong tropical cyclone as it moves south of Vanuatu uh, here before. Once again, stalling by the looks of things. Does it bounce back? It doesn't look like it, but it's a very slow mover. It takes it a couple of days to really pull out of Vanuatu. Um, still is a relatively strong tropical cyclone as well. Oh, a little spoiler, there's a tropical cyclone forming up towards Darwin, but again, long-range access G3 is incredibly unreliable. Uh, but yeah, the key takeaway is intensification will be very slow. It'll be in a very similar part of the um, the Coral Sea, just north of New Caledonia and just towards the west of uh, Vanuatu, and it's likely to very much slow down towards next weekend and early next week as it pulls out of Vanuatu. So we're starting to get a really good idea of what the forecast is going to be over the next uh, at least five Five days regarding this tropical low and for all my Queensland viewers, not likely to be a significant threat. I think I've rambled on about this system for long enough. Uh, I think 10 minutes to talk about a tropical low is a little bit overkill, so we're going to switch it over and take a look at the remnants of tropical cyclone Kiralee as she makes her voyage through southern Queensland and then towards uh, South Australia and then into New South Wales, which will happen across tonight and into tomorrow. You can see a lot of rainfall still expected with this system's passage. Actually, we'll take it back to where we are right now, and I was going to say take a look at 
radar imagery, but I forgot that this part of Australia is complete dead zone for radar imagery. We're not going to get any radar imagery on this tropical low as it moves towards Birdsville. However, just looking at this thunderstorm activity that we're seeing um, through parts of central Queensland right now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there's some pretty brief periods of very heavy rainfall around Birdsville and some of the communities surrounding Birdsville. It looks like this might be dumping quite a substantial amount of rainfall in some locations. Birdsville itself is already receiving some pretty strong winds, I guess, for the desert community, 33 kilometers an hour, uh, probably gusting to around 50 or 55. So from a tropical low that's made it this far through Queensland, that's relatively strong. And it looks like Birdsville might be receiving some pretty strong uh, rainfall showers. Uh, quite soon. But by this evening, we'll be moving into South Australia and then into early uh, Monday morning, we'll be seeing this pull into New South Wales um, before it makes its voyage through New South Wales, which will be really quick. It'll be moving at, at a forward pace of around 80 to 90 kilometers an hour at this point, and it'll be weakening rapidly. And by uh, sort of early Tuesday morning, it'll still have some fairly heavy rainfall on the southern side of the system, but it won't be anywhere near the magnitude that it is right now. And you'll be only seeing rainfall accumulations through parts of uh, this part of New South Wales at around 30 to 50 millimetres. Maybe one or two spots might get up to 100 millimetres of rainfall. So still the risk of heavy rainfall through southern New South Wales, but the real rainfall is going to be up in north uh, western New South Wales. We will be seeing places like Tibura uh, receive up to 150 millimetres of rainfall, but still from these thunderstormy showers around the center of uh, this tropical low, the rainfall will be very isolated. It'll be heavy in places and non-existent in other places. So again, the rainfall forecast isn't set in stone and there will be some locations that get the bulk of the rainfall here on this forecast and then ones that completely miss out on the rainfall. Uh, like I've said time and time again with thunderstorms and weak tropical cyclones, the rainfall is quite unpredictable, but it is still the most dangerous factor of a tropical low. Now, there's been a little bit of comment in the mainstream media about how uh, Lake Eyre is expected to fill. Um, 100 millimetres should definitely put some water in Lake Eyre, especially considering it's going to be right on the doorstep of Lake Eyre. Uh, but I wouldn't be... Uh, putting in a, um, saying that we're going to be seeing a record fill out of this uh, tropical low as she moves through. It could still definitely deliver some rainfall and some depth into Lake Eyre, but it probably won't be anything to write home about in uh, most locations, but there's still that chance we get some water uh, through parts of Lake Eyre. Now, earlier on in the video, um, I guess uh, if you're looking up towards Darwin and so forth, you guys would have seen that tropical cyclone that the Access G3 model spun up by around next Friday and I guess into early next weekend. It does spit out a tropical cyclone here and with the monsoon expected to burst once again uh, by around next week or into next weekend or next next weekend actually in about uh, two weeks time, there's still that risk that we receive tropical cyclone activity in the northern territory. Western Australia is the big outlier so far. We've received absolutely nada in terms of tropical cyclone activity so far this season. It's been quite disappointing, frankly, uh, but still with those boiling hot sea surface temperatures, it's probably a good thing that we haven't seen tropical cyclone activity. I think waters are around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. Yeah, as you can see uh, with this model forecast right now, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius in some locations. Very, very warm indeed. And if a tropical cyclone gets itself over this sort of fuel, you'd be seeing rapid intensification for sure um, if the environment allows it. And while we're on this, we'll take a look at sea surface temperatures for parts uh, of the Coral Sea where this tropical low is going to be developing. 30 to 31 degrees Celsius in some locations, uh, 29 to 30 in a lot of other locations. Um, and once I said ample fuel for tropical cyclone genesis here. This thing, if it gets itself in an environment of very low wind shear, we could be seeing a very strong tropical cyclone develop out of it, but it looks like it's just gonna be too broad to really wrap itself together properly. Anyways, that is probably the latest that I have on the Australian weather situation right now. Um, if necessary, I'll be uploading twice a day on this tropical cyclone situation in the Coral Sea, but I don't foresee that being a real problem so far, especially not for Australia. Um, but once again, if there's anything that you want me to cover um, in videos, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. I read a comment yesterday about how the Tonga eruption has actually raised uh, the temperature of the um, Earth's, I guess, atmosphere. Well, the Tonga eruption, it was a huge eruption, but it wasn't um, anything like, I, I guess, climate changeable. It was a big eruption. It was sort of that once in a decade eruption that we saw over in Tonga, I believe just north of uh, Nukualofa. Um, 
but once again, it's sort of that one in 10, one to one in 20 year eruption that we see. I think uh, the, there was a 1993 or something eruption on the Philippines that actually threw out more. And I believe Mount St. Helens was a pretty comparable eruption in terms of, um, I guess, matter ejected from the volcano. I'm not too well versed in volcanoes, but I did actually cover uh, the Tonga volcano situation um, in 2020. Uh, on a, maybe it was 2021, but I did cover it uh, however long ago it was. Uh, it feels like forever ago. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty significant eruption, especially watching it unfold on satellite imagery. It was some crazy stuff to watch. And it also threw out a pretty significant tsunami. I think it was like three meters or something that ended up impacting Vanuatu. So yeah, all in all, fairly significant. And once again, if you want to uh, have anything covered um, in my video, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to cover it. And I do read every single comment and I appreciate all of the support that these videos get. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But that's all for me and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.